So today I want to talk about a lot of things about Toronto, Canada, Vancouver, and just the real estate market, and of course Canadians, and why the real estate price in Canada is just going to go up. I mean, there is no way it's going to go down. Uh, maybe it'll go down, right? But, you know, it won't go down for a long time. And even if it goes down, you won't be able to buy the real estate. Just like, you know, the the high interest rate. You know when they raise the interest rate, people are like thinking, yeah, this is a crash, right? And none of them were able to buy a house, right? Because they're all just losers that just think, oh, hey, uh, I'm just going to wait until it goes down to 100K. And then you're thinking, you know, you, you think it's going to go from like a million to 100K? Like, why? Oh, well, my grandparents bought it for $50,000. Yeah, you know, we're not in your grandparents' era. So, anyways, let's get into the juice of the video. What I want to talk about is one thing. Well, the first thing, which is the fact that Canadian governments, right, are having an election next year. And they want to be on the good side of everybody. So, they want to make the life of people easier by lowering interest rate. And... They already started lowering interest rate and people that don't understand interest rate. Let me give you a really clear and easy to understand situation. Interest rate is like the car, right? When you step on the gas pedal, you're accelerating. When you lift up your feet from the gas pedal, you're decelerating, right? Get it? So down, accelerate. Feet up, decelerate, right? So interest rate down means I want the price to go up faster or maybe prices to go up faster or the economy to move faster. Now, interest rate up, right, decelerates it, which means that I want prices to go up slower, right? I want the economy to go slower. So get it? And right now, what are we doing? We already went through the interest rate hike cycle, right, which is where they, they lifted their gas pedal. I mean, their feet off the gas pedal where it slowed down. Now what are they doing? They put the gas pedal back down, right? They're, they're, they put their feet back down. So they want the prices to go up. And I am not here to argue against the government, right? Because that's what they're doing. I'm here to explain it because most of the people that are waiting for this crash to happen, they don't get what's happening. They just like, you know, they just think, oh, they're just whining and like basically hoping it will happen. And if people don't agree with them, they get upset. You see, th these are the bottom feeders of society. If you're 40 years old and you don't have a penny to your bank account or not even like, you know, $10,000, you have a serious issue. And the issue is not everybody around you. It's you, right? That is the problem. You see, there are a lot of people that cannot work a day job anymore and cannot actually work a job. And, you know, they think they're special. And then, you know, they're just waiting for their parents to die to inherit things, which is, you know, what a lot of people is doing, right? But the problem is, that isn't going to stop the prices from going up, right? That is only your own personal situation. And you're lucky enough to have parents, right? So, you know, immigration slowed down, right? People are going to say, oh, well, there's going to be less immigrants because uh, Trudeau already stopped immigration and whatever. You know, the the uh, the uh, percentage of foreign buyers is at about 5%, right? Even if you give them... Uh, another 15% and bump it up to 20%, it's still a lot less people, okay? And that's in the whole Canada. So it's not that they are driving up the prices. I mean, to a certain degree, right, maybe it is just because somebody looks Indian doesn't necessarily mean they're a foreigner, right? They, maybe they are born in Canada. They just look Indian. I mean, the whole point of people thinking, oh, if you're not white and you know, and you buy a place, then you're a foreigner. It's so outdated, right? We have so many ethnicities in Canada nowadays, right? It doesn't really matter. And sure, right? I'm not saying that they won't drive up the prices, but, you know, still, it's very little. And it's usually in places like Toronto and Vancouver. Now, Toronto prices are already going up. And let me just show you this. And some people, you know, they're, they're already saying, hey, they seen a surge in the sales in October, right? 43%. And this this person is saying, hey, there's probably a boom in 2025 because 25-25 is the election. They should probably pump the interest rate back down even more. And it's not just Canada. The U.S. is also doing interest rate lowering. So, you know, 
what makes people think that the price is, is not going to go up, right? It, 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 it makes zero sense. And like I was saying, people might think, oh, immigration. Yeah, you know, the thing is, if you look back at 2000, there wasn't that many immigration. Prices still went up, right? I mean, yeah, there's demand for housing. But price has been going up since 1950, right? It, it, it had never went back down. 1959, the prices of a, a house in Toronto, a bungalow, is $13,000. Can you buy a house for $13,000 today? Any house, even a shed? No, it's not possible. So the prices of Canadian real estate is going to go up. The only difference is where it's going to go up. The thing is, you see, before, people are focused in, in on Toronto, right? Let me see if I can get a map of Toronto. All right, map. All right. So, you know, people used to be focusing on here. Now, they are expanding out here. And not just that. And they changed the name, right? They included everything here as Toronto now. It used to be just down here. And I don't have a bigger map here. I can't find a bigger map. But people are going towards, like, Hamilton, right? They're going to, like, Oakville. They're going to Waterloo. They're going east to Kingston. They're going to London. They're going to St. Catharines. Right? All of this thing. Like, it's no longer just Toronto here. No, they're going all the way here, all the way there, all the way up here, all the way down here, all the way to Kitchener, and even over here, right? So people, or maybe even to Windsor, right? If you go to Windsor now, you know, there's, there's the prices are, have gone up as well. So, you know, it's not just about immigration right i mean because they are expanding and every it's because the immigrants that have children now they can speak english they're they're they're, they're not stuck in one little city in toronto and building in toronto only so basically people are moving out most of the immigrants or the people that are on student whatever they go out i mean they go to toronto they go to the main city, the major cities, right? They don't go to some random place in the middle of nowhere. Only Canadians go into the middle of, of nowhere because they know the language, right? They they have the experience, right? That's just how it is. They don't go into the middle of nowhere. The immigrants, the people that come here, they go. Only Canadians go into the middle of nowhere, and because let's say people from outside the city or outside of the country they come by in Toronto, right? They pay more money, right? So if you buy a house in Toronto for a million dollars and then you sell or you sell a house in Toronto for a million dollars, you can go to somewhere like Windsor and buy two houses. Why not? Right? Or just buy one house and then keep the other half a million. So why not? Right? So that's what people do. And this is especially true with Toronto's retiring population. Because the people that are retiring, they get it. They're like, hey, I might as well just sell this and then be rich somewhere else. I speak English. I'm perfectly fine. Right. So, you know, the immigrants is not a major problem in terms of why the price is rising. Right. It, the major problem is the liquidity within the system, which is the inflation. You know, they they've been doing inflation since 2008. Right. And then now they're hitting the gas pedal. They're saying, hey, we're going to create more inflation by allowing you to borrow more money. So they, they're combining both of them. And the prices should go up. I mean, who has the money, right? That's the only situation. This is what people hate. You see, as a person that is trying to get into Canada, their ability to borrow is much higher, right? Which means that, you know, it kind of gives them an, an advantage, which is what people are really saying, right? Because Canadians' banks are creating so much inflation, but they allow the first user of this inflation to the immigrants, allowing them to buy properties, right? But it has nothing to do with them, you know, whatever. It's because they, the banks allow them to do that. They give them this disadvantage. And why I know this is because I have a friend like 10 years ago, right? His uh, girlfriend came to Toronto to study. And then she decided to stay here. Now, here's the thing. When she borrowed money from the bank, right, she, like, as long as you have a certain amount, it's okay, like, you know, they ask no question. You don't even need a job, okay? You don't need, like, whatever. 
They don't ask you anything. And basically, you qualify for it within three years, right? So I thought that was pretty unfair because as a Canadian, you have to qualify for everything. So anyways, this is one of the reasons why I'm driving it up. But it has really nothing to do with foreign buyers. It's because the Canadian banks allow them to do this. This is like, you know, allowed to stay. It's like, you know, I heard my friend tell me that he was driving this Uber, right? And there was this refugee and there, you know, he was talking about how, yeah, you know, they get this free hotel and they give it, get like $4,000 or something in total. And all the saying it, it is insane. It, and it's not. It's because they allow them. They are giving it to them. It is not the fault of the person. Like, think about it this way. If you went out and you walked by a store and the store says free money. Right? Anybody can get free money. Who is not, like, why would you not get the free money? Right? You wouldn't say, oh, hey, you know, the thing is, that's not my money. But they're offering it to you. They're throwing it at you. They're like, come get the money. You know, you can't blame those people that get the money. You, like, and for those that say, yeah, I'm not like that. Yeah, I guarantee you're like that. How many people had a free sample in their life, right? Or like, uh, what do you call it? You know, they, they they were giving out drinks and they, they, you know, they just took a bottle of something or a drink or whatever. It's a free sample, right? This is like, everybody has done it. But they, they're trying to act like there's some special stuff. So it's not... The people that are coming here's fault. It is the people that are calling them here and saying, hey, you're going to get the stuff. And I don't want to say it's Justin Trudeau because I don't know who it is. It might be some whatever, but, you know, I don't really know. I don't want to think about it. But it's not their fault. It is the fault of the people allowing them to do that and giving them and calling them and saying, hey, come get the free sample. <laughs> right. So anyways, going back to what I was saying, this is why. Canadian real estate prices are most likely going to go up and it might go up really slowly depending on your city right but you'll see it first in Toronto right because they have a lot of inflation right a lot of money has been created since 2008 and then after you know they they need to slowly get it into the system and they get into the system by allowing you to borrow more money right and of course don't forget the uh the interest rate Right? They started lowering interest rate, right? Because the thing is, they want the economy to go faster. And, you know, as they they want more inflation, they will get increased taxes. And then whenever you buy a house, you stimulate the economy, right? There's construction jobs. You're buying furniture. You're buying all these other things. I don't know, decorations. You're buying, like, pots and pan. All, so it stimulates the economy. And that's why they're lowering interest rate. I mean, for the, for people to think, hey, real estate price is going to just drop back down because I said so, go home. I mean, go do some studies before you actually spit out the thing. Because it's clear to me that, you know, if you were born in 1959 and the house was $13,000, and then now, right, okay, from 1959 to 20, 2024 the house has never gone back to thirteen thousand dollars why the in the hell would you think it will go back down to whatever price you select randomly on the map right it makes zero absolutely zero sense and even if you're like oh during the uh you know was that the the bubble be well not the bubble but like between 1990 and 1998 right and i want to talk about this i want to talk about this and i talked about it before so in 1998, they started adding, like, you know how I was talking about Toronto? This was Toronto. This was this tiny place with Toronto. Basically, this section, this square right here is Toronto. Then they started adding these things like Scarborough, East York, North York. And then, you know, they started adding Etobicoke and whatever is here. I don't even know what's there. But, you know, and that was in the 1999, right? Or 1998, rather, right? That's when they added those things. Now, I don't even know when they added this. They started adding, like, freaking Vaughn and, like, other things. And they, you know, up all the way down to Hamilton, Oakville, right? And I, I don't even know where the map is for the, those stuff. But they started adding all these things. And they, they started calling it the, the GTA. You know, the GTA was, like, up to here when I was a kid, right? 
This was the GTA, basically. Right, this section. How is it that you all add all the thing, Pickering, uh, Markham, Vaughn, and then Oakville, Hamilton, Burlington, and then now you call it the GTA, right? And then you add Hamilton, and then you, the GTHA. So they can keep on expanding this thing. Prices have never, and then when you expand this thing, right, the houses out here should be cheaper. So it brings down the collective housing price. So the price never went back down to whatever these people are talking about, and I think the Toronto real estate is going to go up much higher next year. I mean, it might not soar, right, like some of these people are, are surge, but it will slowly go up. And since Trump was elected, right, people that have U.S. dollars might be hey, saying, hey, maybe I don't like the U.S., so I'm going to move and I'll bring my U.S. dollars, which is 30% higher than the Canadian dollar, right? So if you, you, you have like freaking... What five hundred dollars is like? You get like eight nine hundred dollars in Canadian, so you know it's much a better deal, right? It's almost double, right? You know, and that might help. And of course, people from outside of the U.S. and outside of Canada, if they hold U.S. dollars, hey, they might want to buy. And not just that. I mean, think about the people. People want to come to from India, right? And what does India have? They have gold. Right, they they're a huge investor in gold, and gold has went up quite a bit, right? So what does that mean? They have money, okay? So, you know, I think the real estate market add in with the interest rate lowering and all the thing that's happening with Trump, because Trump is going to stabilize the global economy, right? And then they're gonna start extracting things from Canada and whatnot. So the Canadian dollar is most likely gonna go lower. But the price of real estate will most likely go higher because when you're extracting value from the Canadian dollar, right, your Canadian dollar is not worth that much anymore. And of course, we need to print much more money and we much we need to stimulate the economy much more, right, because Trump is doing this, which means that the price should go higher, in my opinion. But I think the phase of interest rate hikes are over. I mean, there might there people are talking about how, oh, it just suddenly spiked to like 20%. Yeah, maybe in five, ten years after Trump is gone, right? Because Trump is not going to let the interest rate spike, right? I mean, he's going to probably do an executive order. And that's just the world we live in. And if you don't like it, that's your problem, right? And a lot of people are having trouble dealing with this. They keep on telling, oh, the econ economy is bad. You know, it's way too expensive. Well, tell that to the people that are, are born in 1950, right? Or... You know, everything has been that expensive, right? I mean, the 1950s, houses were $13,000 in Toronto. Now it's a million dollars. And you don't even get that big of a house anymore. So why don't you tell it to those people? Because those people will sit back and say, Oh, son, or daughter, or whatever, or young child, this is just how Canada works, right? Prices just go up. Not because of anything, but because... I think they mandate it. I don't know. But, you know, your economic analysis or whatnot, if you've been analyzing since 1953 or 1950 or 1959 and you've been waiting for the price to go back to $13,000, yeah, I wasted my entire life waiting for it to go back down to $10,000 and it never went back to 10000 Now I'm like 90, you know. It's quite sad. And I was hoping every year when I was 20, when I was 30, when I was 40, when I was 50, 60, 70, 80, now I'm 90. It never went back down to $10,000.